What's up fellow human? L-U-Y Post-workout It was a proper workout today Back day for that matter For me back day is the best, uh, the best day I love it, I love it Furthermore, when I go to the gym today Right now it's like, you know, mid-afternoon Best, best time of the day uh, For the fact that the gym is empty, right? Gym is empty, so I got the gym for myself pretty much AC was blasting And so it is right now in my home Right? And uh, you ask me a lot of questions, why do I do it? I have no choice. I burned two computers because of the weather. The computer needs low temperature to function well, right? I mean, the motherboard gets really, really hard, especially when you try to render videos in HD. So that's the reason. If it was up to me, I'll shut it down. As a matter of fact, when it's blasting like this, I'm next to my uh, computer, I have to put a hat on or else I'll get sick. That's why I will never move to Florida or Arizona or California. It's too hot for me, right? Canada all day. And this year is exceptionally hot. Don't get triggered. I know that you guys, Trump voters, do not believe in global warming. Anyway, let's talk about fitness yet again. And this is a uh, recurring issue. Somehow, it, I think it's related to the, the last subject I spoke about, namely bigorexia, right? Now, my clients, my trainees, I give them either a three-day split or a four-day split, which means they go to the gym to train three or four days per week, right? However, if they're, the, if they're on the cut, they will do cardio pretty much every day, right? And some of them actually, a chunk of them, have some trouble not going to the gym often, right? They want to go like every single day, not only that, a lot of them used to pretty much train their muscles twice a week. Now, I know this is one of a, quite of a dividing subject, a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, opinions on it, and they differ from one person to another. And this is just my opinion, right? Lifting since 28 years, better believe me when I tell you, I've tried everything, right? I remember back in 1994, I joined a gym in Algiers. It was like the biggest gym back then, right? I think it was called Sabrina or Sabrina or whatever that is. Dude, I signed up for six days per week. And at that moment, my intent was to work out my muscles every, uh, I mean, uh, twice a week, right? Like have a three-day split that I repeat twice in the same week. Let's say I'm going to do chest on Monday and then legs and then back and then do chest again and legs, legs and back. I only have one day off, which is like, I don't know, like Saturday or so. Why? Because I was reading magazines back then. And as far as I recall, the guys from the late 80s, like Richard Gaspari, my Christian Lee Haney, Lila Brada, and so on and so forth. As far as I know, if I do recall well, most of them were doing this, like training their muscles we're talking about essential, like, you know, the, the, the regular muscle group, like bicep, tricep, chest, back, legs. They were doing like twice a week. And I was doing that. Dear me, was it efficient? No. Now, granted, my other metrics were not saluted too. My diet was not loyal. My cardio was not there. My rest time was not saluted. And even my training technique sucked. I was learning, right? Because before that, I was working out at home. I started back in 1990-91. And then, thankfully, the magazines got updated. We, we started to read about Dorian Yates. Now, Dorian, there's a famous video about him when he comes at, uh, he was doing an interview prior to Mr. Olympia. I think it was in 1990, I think 93 or something where he came with that crazy shape. Frankly, I don't know, because his hair was a little bit longer. It might have been 92. Maybe he won 92 because his hair was blonde and a little bit, um, a little bit longer when he won versus Kevin Lavroni in Helsinki. And he said, well, I train, uh, I train three hours and a half per week total. So his whole training is three hours and a half the whole damn week. And he said, well, I think most of the other guys probably do that in one day, in one session. And he brought like a brand new kind of vision to, to train. 
it, it resembles some sort of a training called Max OT. And then a switch, because I mean, Dorian was like a revolution, was the biggest guy ever, hardest guy ever. And although I'm not a big Orexia fan, but his shape in 93 was just mesmerizing, right? It was just pictures, you guys remember them, black and white. And they were like totally changing the whole game. He destroyed everybody. He destroyed the best shape of Flex Wheeler. Flex Wheeler was coming very strong from a win in Iron Man. And also he won the Arnold Classic. And he came there, he was good. Flex was good. But Dorian ravaged everybody. I mean, he was so good, Dorian, as far as I know, the pictures were taken when he used to weigh 269 pounds. But he thought it was, it's, it's, it's an overkill. I'm gonna shock everybody. So he continued dieting a bit. And he came in 12 pounds lighter. I think he came in at 257. But it was still kind of a revolution. He decimated freaking Sean Ray, you name it, 93. Everybody was there. I think it was the last Mr. Olympia of uh, Lee Labrada. He knew that he needed to retire, right? Mr. Labrada was not boxing good. And that was the giant of them all. I mean, Lou Ferrigno was trying to come there. That was also the smallest bodybuilder, I think, ever to compete in Mr. Olympia. His name was Flavio Bacciani or Baccianini. Right. But anyway, so I changed my technique. And frankly, it was, it was a revelation for me too. It was more efficient. And it's very hard on your morale and your, and your mental to accept that. And right now, that's what I do. That's why I confess to my client too. Your biceps, sir, in my humble opinion, and you can do whatever the hell you want if I'm not your trainer. For me, I train it once a week. Every single muscle I train once a week. The only muscle group that I can hit several times a week are the calves and the abs. And you can add to that your, uh, your uh, forearms, which are pretty much re uh, recruited, whether you like it or not, in every upper body exercise for that matter. But that's that. And if I do recall well, I've read a study back in the day when magazines were alive. I don't know if it's accurate or if it's still relevant, but as far as I recall, the nerves of the muscles take five to six days at least to recover, right? Now, the, the, the muscle groups I mentioned, most of them, the bicep, tricep, legs, and so on and so forth, are mostly populated by fast twitch fibers. And supposedly these are, this is the way to train these, right? They have a small amount of slow twitch fibers but not like the calves, because you're walking every day on your calves, right? So the calves usually, for that matter, can handle uh, basically to be hit more often, the frequency is higher, and also the rep range is totally different. I, I don't know about you guys, but when I cut my, uh, work out my calves, I'll do high reps, right? Like crazy high reps. You can go 20, 25, 30, for all I know. Biceps though, you know, lower than 10, 12 max, and so on and so forth. So that is that. And it's quite challenging for some clients, some trainees to accept that. They're, bro, I'm gonna lose my gains. I need to hit my biceps twice or three times a week. In my opinion, and in my experience, it is counterproductive. You, I mean, you don't give the time for your body to recover. Now, how come these old uh, guys from the 80s were doing that? Well, they were enhanced. And I think it's a known fact that when you are under anabolic steroids, your recovery time is definitely shorter. Right? I mean, you're building more muscle, your protein synthesizes, baby, please, is more loyal than a regular dude pretty much rolling with two testes, baby, please. So that's that. So, if it is an advice I can give you, sir, your muscle groups hit them once a week properly. Right? Except, you know, abs, as I mentioned, cows, and arguably your forearms. The rest once a week, come back home, have the other metrics proper. Do your cardio, cardio as I'm doing right now. Eat well, have a proper, proper macros. Don't overeat, don't dirty bulk, right? And that's about it. And furthermore, listen to the guys who are natties, right? Who've been around the block. It's a totally different ball game. And for this, I have even to agree with, with Phil Heath. And as you guys know, I'm, not, I'm, I'm no friend with Phil Heath. I don't even talk to him. We're not even talking, uh, we're not in talking terms since last year, 
obviously. But he told me something that I do believe is true. He told me Hany Rambod, who is his trainer slash guru, and by the way, Hany Rambod, I can afford to call him a trainer because he goes with his, uh, with his guys like Jeremy Bondia and uh, Phil Heath and he trains them like physically, he, he, he corrects them, right? For example, he has that deltoid or shoulder centric uh, mentality. So everything revolves about around this muscle because right? it is a central thing. It controls, it connects everything, your upper body, you got your chest, bicep, triceps, back, they all connect to it. So he knows a thing or two. What Phil Heath told me back then, as far as I recall, he told me Henry Rambaud is the best because he learned it when he was natty, right? He learned it in the trenches. He, he did it the hard way. You comprehend what I'm saying? And that's a totally different ball game as opposed to a guru. All he knows is basically chemical warfare. Most of the gurus out there, you can name them, they have no clue how to train people. They don't even train them. I mean, they email them basically the stock, right? The substances they gotta consume. As simple as that. that, that that's not a trainer, that, that's a chemical guru. You need to comprehend that. And we see some people who think they know stuff or two. When Kevin Lavroni tried to come back, like a guy told him, bro, go ahead and take a, a cheeseburger or, or three cheeseburgers and you will bounce back. Because Kevin, like two years ago, he published a picture of his back when it was smallish, it was smaller. Than, than, than before, than his heyday when he was in 96, 95 or whatever. So people were trolling him and supposedly a guru told him, bro, go ahead and have a refeed and eat all kinds of cheeseburgers and fries and you will, you will look good. Nonsense. So that's that. You need to comprehend. You might go to a gym where you share the space with enhanced gym bros, all puffy, all watery, on their whatever trend or whatever cycle they're in, or moody too, they have their gym ego and they yell and they scream and this and that. You share the same gym as them, the same premises. You use the same dumbbells, although lighter, for good reason. But you are not the same species, bro. Let's be honest. Totally different ball game. You do the same exercises, but different ball game, right? If you're natural. Your progress is reasonable, it is steady, it is simple, it is humane, and your size too. I mean, look at me, I'm doing cardio. Uh, am I breathing uh, heavy? I mean, cardio on a bike for me is so simple. It's not even that efficient. I need to go on a stair masters to reach 160, 170 heartbeat. Aside from that, look at me, I'm chilling. You will see some, uh, some guys, and I posted a video like yesterday, I think, or the day before, about a pro, bro, these guys, when they talk, they're out of breath. Even when they talk, they're out of breath. Why? Because that whole real estate is fake, right? They need to pump that blood to all those basically enhanced muscle fibers. They consume energy. And furthermore, you all know, if you don't know, let, let me aware you, drugs like Tren hinder greatly your vascular, I mean, your cardiovascular capabilities. They destroy your cardiovascular system. You know that, right? Actually, they all do. Even the other steroids. The most, I mean, the real McCoy, the dad of them all. Testosterone has a direct effect on your, on your heart and all the, the cardiovascular system. You need to comprehend that. Right? It's kind of funny when these guys are dying one after the other and their heart are failing. They blame it on everything. This is old as, as crazy. They blame it on everything except the drugs. Oh, bro, he has a family issues. Oh, he was eating a lot of cheeseburgers. And that was that, 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 that guru was, I think he's dead by now, in the UK. He had like two strokes, two freaking heart attacks or, or whatever. And he was blaming it, blaming it on, uh, on black coffee. You know what I mean? And that was that guy. I made a video about him. He's dead. Uh, a dead bodybuilder from New Zealand. He was in a heart transplant uh, waiting list. And people were, were, were basically protesting against that. How come you, you put this guy, a known juice user, known steroids user, on a waiting list for a heart transplant where other people who are really genuinely sick? You know what I mean? 
So there is no, there is no uh, free ride. If you're natural, be very proud about it. And again, my videos nowadays, since I'm not covering the, the juiced up pros that much, the, the reach of these videos for good reason is lower. Because unfortunately, the other guys, the enhanced guys, or the, 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 or the people who basically promote them, uh, speak louder. They attract more. Because kids, unfortunately, they're attracted to people who are grand, bigger than real life. But my message, if it reaches you and you're natural, my goal is to convince you to stay natural. I hope my videos incite you and incentivize you to, to stay on the natural way. This is what I'm doing. And it's simple. This video will have like maximum 10,000 views, if not even less. But what you're looking at is the real thing. Natural guy, 43 years old, human being. I have two fractures on my wrists. My hand has been fractured five times. My genetics are not the best. Listen, I'm subpar, but hopefully I'm giving you a proper, correct, and honest message about how to be natural and be proud of it. And how right now, since I'm here, I'm going to tell you exactly what is my current heartbeat. And I'm pedaling since I don't know, like more than 15 minutes or so. There we go. So this is the, the heartbeat of the 43 years old. Right? Come on. 108, 107. So that's it. It's, you know, this is a thing. An enhanced guy cannot have this. These guys are washed up. They hit the wall like 10 years ago as opposed to my age. Right? That's that. God bless you. Be saluted. Don't forget to like the video. And tell me what you guys think about whatever I said. I said a lot of things. But they're genuine and loyal. Be saluted. It's a proper video. It really was.